Now we move on to part C, and then we're going to be dealing with a case where n is equal to 2, l is equal to 1, and m is equal to 1. And then we're going to look for the expected value of x squared. But then this time around, we can't use the same symmetrical argument as we did last time, because if you check out the plot for this particular case of the wave function, you will see that you cannot apply the symmetrical argument. So you can't, the expected value of x squared is not going to be equal to the expected value of y squared and z squared. So we can't apply the same symmetrical argument as we did last time. So in order to calculate this, we're going to have to break this down explicitly. And then recall that x is equal to r times sine theta cosine psi. And then we're going to square this, and then we're going to take the expected value. So what that means is that in order to find the expected value of x squared, we're going to have to deal with this integral over here. So r squared sine squared theta cos squared phi. So this is the term we're interested in. This is the expected value we're looking for. And then we put in the function xi. So this time we're dealing with xi 2, 1, 1. And it's a function of r theta and phi squared. And if the differential for spherical coordinates is just equal to r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And then the bounds for r, it goes from 0 to infinity. For theta, it goes from 0 to pi. And then for phi, it goes from 0 to 2 pi. So in the end, what we want to do is to solve this integral. So first of all, what exactly is xi211? So you can check back on one of the previous problems. Uh, we explicitly derived the expression for this uh, for this function, xi211. So I'm just going to copy out the result we obtained from that problem. And then in that problem, we found that this function is equal to 1 over the square root of pi a divided times 1 over 8a squared times r times e to the power of negative r over 2a times sine theta, and then times e to the power of i phi. So we're going to substitute this uh, expression inside this, uh, this location over here. So that's what we're going to do. So the expected value of x squared continuing on. So we have r squared sine squared theta, and then cosine squared phi. And then now we're going to have to substitute this in. So we have these constants. I'm just going to put those outside of the integral for convenience. So we have a 1 over pi a. The square, don't forget there is a square over here, so it takes away the square root sign. And then we have 1 over 64 a to the power of 4. So I'm squaring this as well. And here we have r squared, e to the power of negative r over a. And then next we have sine squared theta. And then this e term over here just goes away because don't forget we're taking the conjugate and then squaring. So we're, we're multiplying the original function with its conjugate. And so that uh, so what happens is that you're going to have this term. And then when you take the conjugate, you're going to have an e to the power of negative i phi. And then you're going to multiply both of these together so that both of them will cancel out. So this term will just cancel itself out. We don't have to worry about this. And so this is what we have inside the integral. And then we just copy down the differential, r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And then the bounds for r goes from 0 to infinity. So as before, I'm just going to write this down. So I can group up these constants together. So 64 pi a to the power of 5. And then, so now let's try to clean this expression up a bit. Let's try to group up the terms together. So for the r squared terms, you can see that we have these three r squared terms. So it becomes r to the power of 6. And then we also have this term that is related to r. And then let's look for the theta terms. We have a sine squared theta, we have a sine squared theta, and we have a sine theta. So we combine those together to give us sine to the power of 5 theta. So these go away. And then uh, last of all, we also have a cosine squared phi. So you have a cosine squared phi, and then we write down the differentials. So this whole thing looks like uh, a bit of a mess. So let's try to group things up a bit. So since this term is entirely composed of r terms, I can actually just pull out the uh, r integral to the outside. So we have r to the power of 6, e to the power of negative r over a dr. And note that I can do this because this term is unrelated to theta and phi, and there are no other r terms outside. 
and then the bounds are all independent of uh, the other terms, so both all these terms are just constants, so it's perfectly fine for me to pull this integral out. And then I can do the same for theta, so you can see that we also have an integral from 0 to pi for a sine to the power of 5 theta, and then we also have the same thing for phi. We have an integral from 0 to 2 pi times cosine squared phi. So now dividing, we're basically just dividing up our integral into three separate parts. So now we have three separate tasks. We need to solve these three integrals. So let's tackle them one by one. So the first one, this one is the one that is that has r as a variable. So we have r to the power of 6, e to the power of negative r over a dr. And then you'll see that this is actually pretty similar to what we've done before. We're going to do this substitution that u be equal to r over a. So I'm not going to go through the details. In the end, what you're going to get is that you have a u to the power of 6 times e to the power of negative u du, and all this is going to be multiplied by a to the power of 7. So you can try to work this out in detail to see why we get an a to the power of 7. I'm not going to go into the details, so we've done this many times already. And then, like before, we're going to invoke the gamma function, and then this integral over here is just going to be equal to 6 factorial. So in the end, this whole integral is just going to be equal to 6 factorial, and we obtain this from the gamma function, times a to the power of 7. So this is the first integral. So we found that this is equal to 6 factorial times a to the power of 7. So now let's tackle the second integral. So for the second integral, we have integral from 0 to pi of, time, uh, of sine to the power of 5 theta, d theta. Now to deal with this, I think the best way is to just use substitution. So I'm going to express this integral like this. So I'm just expressing sine squared theta into, uh, as 1 minus cosine squared theta. And then I can let cosine theta be equal to u. So I'm just doing substitution, so this is a pi. So when uh, theta is equal to 0, u is equal to 1. When theta is equal to pi, u is equal to negative 1. And then we have 1 minus u square squared. And then doing the substitution, you can see that du d theta is equal to negative sine theta. And so that's why sine theta d theta is actually equal to negative du. So we can replace the sine theta d theta with a negative du. So in the end, what you're going to get is 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the power of 4. And then I'm going to take this negative sign and I'm going to flip the integral. So it goes from negative 1 to positive 1. And then since this whole thing is symmetric about the y-axis, I can actually take away the negative 1, replace this with a 0, and then tack on a 2. So the integral from negative 1 to 0 is the same as the integral from 0 to 1. So I can just put a 2 here and evaluate the integral from 0 to 1, which is uh, definitely easier because you have a 0 over here. So integrating this, this should be easy enough. So we just obtain something like this, and we substitute in 0 to 1. So for the 0 terms, all these terms just go away, of course. So all we have to deal with is 1 minus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 5. And then this is just basic fractions. So we have 15 minus 10 plus 3. So in the end, minus 10, we have 8, 6. So we have 16 over 15. And so this is what this second integral is going to be equal to. So we found that this integral is equal to 16 over 15. So 16 over 15. Now we need to deal with this third integral. And now this should be easy enough. So cosine squared phi d phi. Now there's actually a trick you can use to solve this. You can notice that you can observe that this is going to be equal to the same integral but for sine square phi and you can just add them together and then you just have an integral of 1 from 0 to 2 pi and then you can see that both integrals are the same and then you can just get your 2 pi and then divide it by 2 and you'll get that this is equal to pi but yeah, you can work that out yourself if you're interested but the more traditional method of course is to use the double angle formula so we know that cosine 2x is equal to 2 cosine squared x minus 1 so we have 1 plus cosine 2 phi divided by 2 d phi for this integral over here so for this, we have 1 over 2, and then we're just going to integrate the 1 from 0 to 2 pi, so we have 2 pi over 2. And then integrating cosine 2 phi from 0 to 2 pi, this is just going to be equal to 0, because this turns into a sine, sine 
and then when you substitute in 2 pi and 0, everything is just equal to 0. So in the end, you have 2 pi over 2, which is just equal to pi. So we found that this third integral is equal to pi. So now we're ready to finally move on to the final solution. So we, now we know that the expected value of x squared is equal to 1 over 64 pi a to the power of 5. And then we have 6 factorial, which is equal to 720 times a to the power of 7. And then we have 16 over 15. And then we also have pi. So now we can combine everything together. So this pi cancel out. This, these a's, they cancel out. So we have a squared. And then we can also cancel out some of these terms as well. So if this 15 and this 720, this becomes uh, 48. And then we can use 16 as a common factor to factor out these terms. This becomes 3, and this becomes 4, and then this becomes 4. So we have 12a squared. And so there you have it. This is the expected value of x squared.